<laughs> Lap belts only, because we're cool and it's the 70s now. Yeah, you're Just, probably not going 100 miles an hour no, right now. That's why I have that. Oh, oh I love that indicator. I had no idea there's an indicator there. All right, so I'm here at John's Garage again for for having me no, out no to problem. take a look at your car. Uh, yeah, so what have we got here? We got a 1973 Challenger with a 340 in it. And you told me a little bit about this beforehand, but the story being you really, used to have one of these. In 1976, I bought a 73 Challenger, black, blue interior, 344 speed car. Had it for 11 years, used it, abused it, and life it in a way, bought a house, had kids, the car had to go, unfortunately. And I've been wanting another one ever since. But six, almost six years ago now, this came out. And I says, yeah, I'll have another one. So I bought this one. It was a 318 at the time. I since put a 340 in it. I'm slowly but surely getting it so it looks a lot like my old car. Yeah, so yours was a 340 yeah. Rally, was it? Yes. And this was just a plain day. This would not have had this hood on it. It would not have had these gills of that stripe. It would have just been a very plain Jane car. Okay. And this is, uh, what's this color? It's yellow. It's, it's a Miata, believe it or not. Miata Sunburst Yellow. Miata Sunburst Yellow. I love it. It looks amazing. So, one of the questions I always have with these, and I'm not a Mopar guy, uh, per se. Uh, I, I know, the like if I looked at this, I'd guess 72, 73. What are the differences between the years? 70 and 71. They started in 70, went to 74. 70 and 71 are basically the same body. They have a little bit different grill and tail lights. 72, 3, and 4 share all like this cut, this grill. This whole front end is all 72 through 74. Okay. But in 72, these bumpers were tucked way in. This before they had to come up with the five mile an hour bumpers. Oh, and, and they, they added and, the bumperettes. They added, added the bumperettes. Now uh, in 74, the bumperettes got even bigger. Ugh. Again, <laughs> yeah, well, everyone loves what happened in the mid 70s with muscle cars, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> and in 70 and 71, you could get one of these cars with a Hemi and a convertible. You so. They didn't come with a Hemi in these years, 73, 74? 72, 73, 74, the biggest motor in it was 72, 73, the biggest motor was a 340, 74, the biggest motor was a 360. Wow, okay. And you, you said you got this 340 out of a 69? It came out of a 70 duster. 70 duster? Yeah. Okay, so a little more compression. More compression, better heads, more cam, and I added a different cam to it to give it just a little bit more. Can we take a look underneath? Sure. I'll let you do that. I don't want to scratch anything. That's cool. So you just put this in recently, right? I've got less than 200 miles in this motor. Right now. Oh, she's still in braking. Yep, she absolutely <laughs> is. Running good? Oh, it's running flawless. Oh, I'm excited. Had a, had a local builder build the car, build the motor, and he did a great job. Awesome. The Rad aluminum updated. Yes. Uh, is that is that factory? factory? Yep. Wow. But it's got headers and it says it's got. The reason I put these valve covers on, these are exact again, exact same valve covers I had on my Challenger back in the day. So I kind of. There's some nostalgia there. Oh, there absolutely is. And I wanted the car to look old school. I yeah. didn't want it to look like. And these are a very old school setup. Even the uh, the uh, cell super coil. I had one in my car back in the day, and it's a very old school look. So I went with that. Yeah, and that's what people did back then, right? Absolutely. And they, it's not like they didn't make power. They were great back then. Like, Yeah. And this is, uh, what is this? That is a fuel filter. Blade. That's a fuel oh, filter. That is that's a marine fuel filter. Marine blade. fuel filter. That'll keep your stuff clean. Yeah, it goes right down to uh, how many microns. It's just really super, super good filters over here. Yeah, All period, period updates, really. Apart yeah. from the, that, the aluminum radiators weren't really that common back then. No, you, you wouldn't have seen them. But also place. overheating was very common back then. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to keep it cool. Let's check out the inside. All right, so are these factory gauges here? Yes. Here, and then you've added a tack. Yeah. And you've got these aftermarket gauges for oil pressure, water temp, and then uh, your voltage now. Yes. You, you, <laughs> they're all at a funny angle. Yeah, the reason being is I've got them clocked. So they, if, like for instance, the uh, the oil pressure usually runs at 80 pounds. 
Oh, I see. If, well, the temperature runs at 180, and that runs at about 14 and a half. So if all three of them are right where they're supposed to be, all three If they're vertical, they're are, good. Exactly. So it's just a quick look. I know it's good, and I can keep it on go. I don't have to worry about concentrating on it. Awesome. And then this, is this is this factory? It's no. like a pistol grip automatic shifter. It, it's after it's aftermarket. Oh, I love it though. Like that is the most comfortable possible shifter you could ever have. Yeah. See now my <laughs> car back in the day being a four speed, had one of those from the factory. Oh yours was it was yours it was, was a standard? Speed. Yeah. So awesome. it had one of those here from the factory. And then you've got a little bit of update here so you can Oh yeah. Gotta have a little bit old, of tunes. Yeah. Nothing crazy. The old radios were not great. Well they were only AM. They what they didn't even have FM in Oh in this. okay. <laughs> yeah, FM radio. Well technology of the future. And lights, dimmer. Oh, these switches feel cool. These old. That's neat. Yeah, it's, it's not. In, it's not in, backlighting. It's, it's like it's indirect lighting. It, yeah. There's a light bar across the top that lights the gauges. There's no no lights in the gauges and stuff. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. I love all these old switches. They just they just feel great. Yep. So they're like mechanical. Mm -hmm. And what's this lock? That's for your four-way flashers. Oh, okay. That's your four ways there. It's got the. It's got high beam. Yeah, seventies. Yep. The high beam switch yep. on the floor. Yep. <laughs> it does. Oh, <laughs> mechanical everything. Yep. Love it. Yeah, there's nothing electronic in these cars. Fuzzy dice set. Got to have. Now, use. okay. This is something that's weird about the seventies vehicles. So this is like a shoulder belt. Yes. And, and it, it adds in, it like it clicks just in. It clicks in with the regular belt, yes. Okay, and the lap belt you can use without it if you want to. Absolutely. Okay, so it's like a two piece belt. Yep. That's interesting. And I think you can probably tell how much we use the top, the, the lap belt. What, the ones that are clipped in there yeah, uh, permanently? Yeah we, yeah, we don't use them at all. <laughs> They're very cumbersome. Now, in 74, the Challengers actually had a complete retract system with shoulder straps. Oh, that was the, they changed in 74. They changed in 74. Okay. And I've actually thought about trying to find a 74 and getting the retract system to be able to have the shoulder belts. Yeah, but you want it to be convenient, not like having to reassemble yeah. the seat belts every time. Exactly. These are just an absolute pain in the ass, so I just don't use them. So the locks up here, that's an interesting lock setup for the door. Instead of the, instead of the pin up there. Yeah, the lock's in the, it's in the armrest. Okay, is is that unlocked or what did I lock myself so you in? Push it down, so it oh, lock down it. is locked. Yeah. Oh, so they're really, really well set up for people to, to jimmy rig their way in. Oh yeah. <laughs> so oh, it just, get a little <laughs> flick and then you go. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's pillarless doors too, so the window bends back real easy. Oh my. Yeah. yeah. Super easy to steal. <laughs> cool. Parking brake, brake release. Nice. Wind up windows. Oh yeah. All the convenience. Oh, these ones are. I, I kind of like wind up windows. Mm. I'm strange. My first car, and my third car. I still had. A, I'm old enough where I had a few wind up window cars. Oh, you got the louvers. They look so cool from the inside. You forget when you get in, and then you look back. Yeah. That's, that's badass. Those were not available in '73, but I always wanted to set. What year were they available? '70 and '71. Okay. So these are aftermarket wheels. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you got these because they were the same as the ones on your the original. original Challenger, yes. When I bought the original Challenger, it had, these are called aluminum slot wheels. Okay. And it had aluminum slot wheels on it. They were what they back then, they were the poor man's Krager. If you couldn't, find, if you couldn't afford Krager SS, you bought these. Okay. And I just, I fell in love with them. So They're a nice wheel. Wanted, I always wanted to set on this car, so I wheeled and they yield and they finally ended up with four wheels. And I bought some tires and I put them on. Nice. So suspension-wise, you've gone over this. I guess you were saying that over the six years, every winter you tackle a new project. But it was a driver when you got it, right? It was, yes. But it was a driver that was needed some upgrades, needed some, needed some repair. Yeah. Like I completely rebuilt the front end, all new bushings, all new, you know, everything. The whole front end's new. I redid the brakes. I've got new springs over there for this coming winter because I'm going to put new rear springs. I'm putting new bushings and everything in the back because I haven't done that yet. So that's this winter's project. Nice. It looks, it looks, it's like it's, it looks like it's got a nice stance to it. Yeah, it does. Like it's sitting just right. Now let's go over to the back here. I just want to discuss, like, okay, so there are there some differences between the 72, 73, 74 in the back here? Because I feel like they all look the same to me. Just the way the bumper sticks out. 
Oh, okay, and the and the and, and the bumperettes. The bumperettes. Other than that, the seventy-two, three, and fours have exactly the same tail lights. Okay, so I'm not crazy then. I I was well, like wondering like, <laughs> what the differences this black were. Piece here, that's a filler piece. That would not have been there in the seventy-two because the bumper would be right there. Oh, so the, yeah, the seventy-two yeah, bumpers they'd probably look a bit bit they're more. T- more they're tucked in. in. Yeah. And they didn't have these. Match is a nostalgia thing, right? This Wait, is a, to be. This is I, to. I'm kind of reliving my youth. Yeah, so this is a midlife crisis, the definition of it. <laughs> at, at 60 some years old, yes. Wait, well, if that's your midlife, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, eh? Hey, it makes you happy. And so, it does. Oh, I love that. See, that was a 70, 71 only. Two, three, and four didn't get those. Oh, what was the what was the one on the... Just, just a little chrome cap to screw it and plump in. Oh, this is way cooler. Yes. A buddy of mine in, in Dartmouth, his very first performance car, was a 68 Dart GTS, red, black top, fiberglass fenders, but it had, and it had a 340 in it. My first performance car was a 73 Black Challenger. He had this, I had the Dart. So I said to him one day, he said, why don't we just trade cars? So he, he <laughs> and, and I, like, that's funny, you you had his childhood car, and and, you, and he had yours, and I'm like, oh, let's just switch. So I let it stew for a while, and then I, I to, asked him a couple more times, finally one day, I said to him, he says, do you ever think about that? He says, every day. I said, well, what are we to do? He says, bring the Dart down. So I put the dart on the trailer with the dart with them and came out with this. That's awesome. The dart was a conduit for you getting ending up with your your My green car, car of your youth. Yep, exactly. And the same for him. Yep. That's awesome. Also, so one thing I noticed walking through here is all the Challenger stuff. Oh yeah. And the Mopar stuff. Look at all these things. Yeah, there, there's a bit of it here, there, and everywhere. They're all dirty. <laughs> They're all dirty at the moment. I've got to take back and the other. Uh, the Hot Wheel cars are just cars I bought for 99 cents at Walmart. They're not expensive, but every time they go in there and I find another this, Mopar. These ones are like eight bucks, I think. Yes, they're yeah. a bit more. I like those ones. Them. Oh yeah, no, no, they're all, they're all, uh, they're still under a dollar, I swear. Yeah. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Probably not going in 100 miles an hour no, right now. That's why I have that. Oh. <laughs> that yeah. way I know how fast I am actually going. What a workaround. Hey, we can't get the speedometer cable to like register properly. Oh, okay, let's just use satellites. <laughs> oh, I love that indicator. I had no idea there's an indicator there. Oh, yes. That's a. That's part of the rally effect. That's a quirk about these things I never knew my entire life. Those weren't on it when I got it. My old one had him, so I had to find this edge put on That's very cool. I can't see the far one on this well, side. I, think I can't see that you one. You can't see that <laughs> with, with this one, I cannot see that one. <laughs> I know it's there. I have absolutely no idea if it works. Oh, what a nice day. Yeah, there's something badass with the louvers. Wipers tucked right under the hood. Yep. As long as they park properly. This is the problem with these cars. They don't, they what we call it, park, go down and sit in. Uh, they don't they sometimes that. stop wherever they want. All the time. The noises are awesome. You ever miss the four speed? Or you find the automatics better? I mentioned to the wife a week or so ago, and said, gee, it'd be nice to put a four-speed in this car. He looked at me and went, no. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that's expensive. It's probably five to six thousand dollars to buy all the pieces you've got to convert this car to a four car. And then well, five, as, as a former truck driver, I've shifted enough. You shifted enough. Yeah. It's more. It's, it feels like work more than uh, than enjoyment when you've yeah when exactly. you when you've shifted through eighteen speeds. Yes. <laughs> that all facing up. See? That's what I mean. It's a really quick book. They're all facing up. I don't have to worry about it. Locked. Love it. Hood looks awesome. <laughs> so I think it's really easy on the car right now because like I said 200 miles on a brand new motor. Yeah. Thanks. New burnout! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Oh, but it does sound great. What's the cam in it? In 1968, the 344 speeds got a, just a little bit better cam than a regular 340. A little bit more lift. And that's what I put in this. Yeah, as you can tell, it's got a bit more lift. Yeah, I just got, it's got just a little tiny bit of a rumble to it, which is what I want. I didn't want a severe rumble, but I wanted just a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, but you don't want it to idle really well, because then it, <laughs> you want it to like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds great. But I also wanted to be drivable. I'm at the age now, I want to be able to just get in the car and drive. Yeah, you go too crazy with the cam and your tuning has to be perfect, okay. otherwise it won't run. Well, back in the day, I used to street race a lot. And I had great what? big, great, great oh, What's yeah. the statute of limitations on that? Are you good now? Uh, yeah, <laughs> English Drive was my, was my second home. We were up there all the time. So I want, I put a big cam in the motor and I try to get more horsepower. I'm over that now. I've taken this car up and I've driven down English, uh, English Drive with it, but as far as street racing, no, that's the best. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. You overshoot with the cam a little bit, and then it's it becomes the car becomes a prima donna. And yeah. you know, well, the group I hang around with, we travel and we drive our cars a lot. Like we'll go to St. Martin's, we'll go down to Picto, we'll go to Dartmouth. We'll do. So I wanted a car that was drivable. This is drivable. Yeah. You've hit the perfect sweet spot. And that's the nice thing about old cars is that you get you when you restore something and it has a sentimental value, you end up turning it into exactly what you need. It's not and the nice part is too now, back when I had my first car, there wasn't a whole lot available in the aftermarket for performance parts, this and that. They were, you had a very limited amount. Now there's so many and manufacturers, and there's so much stuff available, you can build the car to be exactly as you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it we're really spoiled almost. Like, you gotta think what they, the, the hot rod culture of the 1950s when they were like working with Model A's and and uh, on the salt flats, like they were, they had to custom make everything. They did. And now it's like, there's a, you can go to any website, a catalog of a thousand parts you can pick for your vehicle. Yeah, I want a cam, okay, there's 37 different models of this one, and there's 38 <laughs> models of different ones of that one. Which one do you want? I don't know. Back in the day, it was okay, we've got this cam for that motor, and that was it. Yep. You took that one cam and you made it work. Yeah, and you try to figure out from somebody else's brother's cousin, uncle, who had one that he found out that you could fit a cam in from a different motor, like a factory cam. Yep. And, you know, good luck finding that out if you're on the other side of the country from the first guy who figured it out. Exactly. Nowadays, you, it's all, the internet's really spoiled us. Now we've become a global village. Yeah. I just realized the, a, a really good purpose for having something like this in here. It's a G-force meter. Yeah, it, I suppose it's true. It is. It tells you exactly how fast you're. If you hit, if the fuzzy dice touch your nose, you're going, you're accelerating really fast. <laughs> I think half of what makes a fun car fun is the noise. 
Hello fellow gearheads. I'm in a hotel, traveling for work. If you're still watching at this point, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to pop in with a quick message. We just hit 100 subscribers. We've only been doing this for a couple months, like a dozen videos or so. Still learning how to edit and how to film things and gathering a little bit of equipment. Um, we're still new, we're still hungry, but to the 100 subscribers so far, thank you. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're still watching this point in the video, if you could hit the subscribe button, really appreciate it. Uh, we're getting better as we go, and we're hungry to do more, and uh, this is really, really fun. I enjoy doing it. Uh, Benoit Isaac helped out with a couple of videos. They're excited to do some more. We've got more ideas than we know what to do with um, as we find time to film stuff, and uh, hopefully can put together some funds. We got some great ideas for some cool stuff that has we haven't seen on the internet before. I think I've got kind of a different angle with reviewing older cars and customs and uh, going into the in-depth stories that people tell with them, like John here in this Challenger video. Uh, thank you, John. Love the car. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so thank you to the first 100, hopefully uh, the first of many milestones, then the sky's the limit. Thank you.